For me, personally, one of the most appealing prospects of returning to the Bourne franchise was the chance to reunite with one of my favorite directors and good friends, Paul Greengrass. Paul's style is completely unique, and it was a lot of fun to collaborate with him once again. Take a look behind the scenes to see how Paul brought his signature style back to Bourne. It's a very special franchise. It's a much-loved character. Right. Be Marco. Strangers on the street will consistently ask me, when are they going to make another Bourne movie? Every airport I'm in or every time I'm walking down a street, that's the first question. Are you going to do another one of those Bourne movies? I don't mind being followed around by Jason Bourne. I like Jason Bourne. Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. Why would he come back now? There had been rumors that Matt and Paul were going to make another one. <laughs> One thing that I always said consistently was that I'd do it if he did it. You know, and every few months it seemed like we would have a born conversation, but we, we couldn't really seem to get anywhere until about 18 months ago. The easy thing for us all to have done would have been to have turned up years ago and just done one without much thought. But I, I know I didn't want to do that, and I know Matt didn't want to do that, and that's why we didn't. Meet me at the entrance to the quarter. We waited just because we didn't want to make another born movie before we were ready with a good story. Ah! <laughs> You can only make these films Good job, guys. if you feel it for real. Exactly. So you've got to be true to the character, continue to tell that story in an original way. Sorry, can I just double check? Everybody's happy with that, yeah? The things that we were most concerned with is having not just another sequel, having a change in the world that was relevant and would then inspire us into telling a new story. And the incredible relatability of Matt Damon as an actor and as the character in Jason, I think, is what gets people very excited. I heard you were hacked. Our enemies have become much more sophisticated. We had the germ of an idea that would explore Bourne a decade after we'd last seen him, and explain what he'd been doing and what his state of mind was, and, and would propel us on a new adventure. Bourne carries the burdens of his sins of the past, so it ultimately becomes really an existential tale for him. You know, it's only a matter of time before he's going to reach critical mass. Try to engage the target. I'm accessing CCTV now. We had to put this new chapter of the Bourne franchise into the modern world. It's on a computer. You know, Bourne kind of quickly finds himself matched against somebody who has a skill set that he isn't as familiar with. We are heading into the new world. It's Bourne, but there's now a fourth version of warfare. So what's the status? And there's this whole area of CIA activity. They're going to be working on cyber, artificial intelligence. Heavily is one of the key aspects of, of cyber research at CIA, and that's what she's a specialist in. I don't think her job existed 10 years ago. You could almost go in on it. You know what I mean? And really feel, because yeah, yeah. she's yeah. communing with it. Yeah, yeah. Know, she's playing the instrument, is what's going on. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. She's carrying that computer with her everywhere, and it's, it's part of her personality, and what makes her feel the most powerful and yet the most safe. I appreciate your enthusiasm, but do not push your personal agenda to the DNI. Sort of generational shift of all these young people coming in with a new skill set. They're impatient for change. Sir, does the asset know born? And they're as impatient for change inside the intelligence community as they are outside in the world that we see out there. It's happened with technology and our civil liberties. To what extent people are keeping tabs on us and on our digital life. That's when it got exciting, really, because you suddenly felt that Bourne was not in the old binary world of identity and supremacy and ultimatum. He was in a much more interesting modern world where his loyalties was much less clear than it once had been. Dry. I think that's testimony to Paul always having a great sense of, of what's timely and what's contemporary. Um, that was something that he felt very compelled to start our story in. It wasn't supposed to go like this. I wanted to talk. It feels like it's the next chapter in the story, and that's what I most wanted. I know who I am. I remember what happened. I remember all of it. They actually picked up all the threads that they had laid out, or they brought it back together. Remembering everything doesn't mean you know everything. 
people knows all the kind of quotes that he's put out there and he's very concerned and very precise in that he wants to to make it all come together i'm talking about richard webb your father paul's style is that we feel like we're witnessing things real time He's observing the reality as opposed to forcing a situation that he maybe imagined months ago. So he manages to be very methodical and then also very spontaneous. He's looking at the movie as it's being made and it's kind of speaking back to him and then that's giving him new ideas. But you won't be able to take your eye line and you can't reset, but I'm thinking that you can take your eye line, don't you think? Both Paul and I came out of a documentary background. We try and just be a bit more open and free and looking for that, that kind of that genuine thing that happens between human beings and, you know, that privileged place that a camera can be. Three, two, one, go. Barry and Paul have a shorthand, so Barry's like an extension of Paul in that way. He also knows when something's good and when something's real. That's what you really want with your director and your cinematographer. Coming around a little this way, yeah. Wow. He yeah. keeps the cameras in motion all the time. I've almost never seen a fixed frame. They're either handheld, they're on a slide tray, they're on a dolly, they're hanging from a bungee cord. There's a big, beautiful crane on top of one of these cars, and that thing's moving in all directions at once. He uses just about anything to keep the lens in motion. An action. It's a very special franchise to me, obviously. So you've got to continue to tell that story in a way that people will go, oh, that felt like a born movie. First look, you go back to your first look is perfect. Right. We have to give our audience very early on proof that we're not kidding around. We're not just turning up. And I said, unfortunately, that comes down to you, man. Yeah, I'm a little older, so <laughs> so it takes it takes longer. Um, but yeah, no, it's a lot of weight training and a lot of boxing, cross training, strict diet and stuff like that. I'll look up at you, like literally look at you and see you. Actually been 15 years, I think I counted, uh, since Identity, which is all of my adult life. It's kind of, so far, it's kind of crazy. No, it's been a defining role in my life and my career and it's been a huge role for me on a whole number of levels. You know, to do something four separate times in your career, yeah! it's gonna follow you around. One of the great things about these movies is we've all become really good friends. The great thing about working with the same people is it's, it goes back to that issue of trust. I'm excited to be working on a Paul Greengrass movie again. He's a great person to work for. I just trust him completely. When you make a film, you want people you can trust, and there's no better friend than colleague than Matt. It was absolutely exciting to see suddenly, oh, there's Jason Bourne. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's back. That was, that was absolutely terrific, absolutely brilliant.